And we're back. Problem 105 states that 60% of the members of a study group are women and 45% of those women are lawyers. If one member of the study group is to be selected at random, what is the probability that a member selected is a woman lawyer? So probability, as you'll recall, is the number that we want over number of total possibilities. In this case, they're giving us two different lists. They're giving us a list of people who are women versus people who are not women. And they're giving us a list of people who are lawyers versus people who are not lawyers. And uh, by setting up this matrix, we will be able to figure out who is who and what the relationship is between these two lists. Since they're giving us percentages, let's just uh, set the total to 100, since 100% 100 is going to be the maximum. They say that 60% of the members are women, so we know that the total number of women is going to be 60. That means the total number of people who are not women are going to be 40. I don't know if it'll be actually relevant to this question, but it's always good to fill in as many of these, blo uh, these boxes as we can. They also tell us that 45% of the women, so 45% of these people, are lawyers. So the people who are women and lawyers is going to be 45% of 60. Let's figure out what that is. 45% of 60 is going to be x equals, let's see, 45, 4.5 times 6. Uh, that is going to get us 27. So there are 27 women who are also lawyers. Going back to the probability problem, this uh, the number that we want is 27, and the number of total possibilities, 100%. 27 over 100 is the same as saying 0 0.27. That is answer choice C. 106 is probably one of the more difficult problems that I've encountered in doing these problems because it causes you to think about remainders in a way that you're probably not used to. So you have to do a couple of these problems before you get used to them, but once you get once you get the formula down, it uh, it can actually be pretty easy. But anyway, 106 says when a positive integer x is divided by positive integer y, so x over y, the remainder is 9. If x over y equals 96.12, what is the value of y? You're looking at remainders and saying, oh my gosh, where do I even start? Well, the first thing you should probably do is uh, turn this into an x equals equation. So it actually becomes x equals uh, y and then a positive number that we don't know yet. I'm just going to call it a z. Plus... 9. Okay. You're looking at this and you're thinking, oh my gosh, what does this even mean? How does this, this even make sense? Well, let me um, substitute some numbers and show you. Okay, so let's pretend that x was 5 and y was 3, right? What If you actually tried to, uh, to divide this, what would you get? You would get 1 remainder 2, because 3 goes into 5 1 times, and then you subtract and you get 2. 1 remainder 2. That's the same as saying 5 equals 3, which is the y, times z, which is the integer, so 3 times 1, plus the remainder, which is 2, right? 5 equals 3 plus 2. So anyway, that's, that's how we, we derived this formula here. Anyway, you're thinking, like, what is this? Why does this matter? Well, what we're going to do now is we're going to try to make this look like this and solve for the y. So how do we do that? Let's subtract both sides by y. We get x over y equals z plus 9 over y. What does this tell us? Well, we know that these two are the same. We know that uh, 96.12 is the same as 96 plus 0 0.12, yeah? And 96 is the whole number, and z is the whole number, so these two are equal to each other. All that we're left with is 0 
equals 9 over y. Cross multiply, you get 0.12y equals 9, and then you solve for y. And uh, what you should get at the end of this is, well, let's solve it. 9, move over to the decimal place two times. Boom, boom. And you get uh, 7, 14, 8, 65. Okay, so you get 75. 75 is going to be your answer. And that is answer choice B. Now we're on to number 107. Let's set up this problem. And it just says, if x is the product of the positive integers from 1 to 8, inclusive, so from 1 to 8, so basically 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5, 6, 7, and 8, we don't really care about the 1 here, but if x is this, and i k m and p oh it's an ugly m m and p are all positive integers it's good to know such that x which is this also equals 2 to the i power times 3 to the k power times 5 to the m times 7 to the p then i plus k plus m plus p equals what? Now this may look like a really complicated problem, but what we're going to do is we're going to divide this into three parts. Part one, we're going to tackle this. Part two, we're going to figure out how that relates to this problem. And part three, after we figured out i, k, m, and p, we're going to solve this equation. So let's take it in parts. Part, well, yes, so part one, you're looking at these numbers, you should have noticed when you were writing down the problem that these are all, uh, these are all prime, prime numbers. So that should give you about what you want to do up here. So we're not going to look at the 1 since it's useless, since 1 times anything is going to be whatever that is. We look at 2, we have a 2 here, we have a 3, we have a 4, which is the same as saying 2 times 2, right? If we, if we factor it out. 5, we have a 6, which is 2 times 3. And we have an 8, which is a 2 times 2 times 2. We know this number is going to be the same as this number. So that's like saying 2 to the i power is the same as 2 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7th power. 3 to the 1, 2, second power. 5, there's only one 5, so 5 to the first power. And 7 to the 1th power. See, so now we've figured out what i, k, m, and p are simply by counting the number of prime factors. If i is 7, then we plug it into the equation here. We get 7 plus k is 2 plus 1 plus 1, and that gets us 11. 11 is answer choice D. Number 108, if t equals 1 over 2 to the 9th times 5 to the 3rd, then, oh, and it's a terminating decimal, how many zeros will t have between the decimal and the first non-zero digit? Okay, how would we solve this? Uh, let's see, we can't simplify these. These are already primes. Oh, let's just, let's just figure out what it is. Okay, 5 times 5 times 5. 5 times 5 times 5, that's 25 times 5, 125. Okay, so that's 125. 2 to the 9th power, oh, 2 is a small number, let's figure this out. 2 times 2 times 2, 2, 2, uh, 2, 2, 2, 2, that's going to be 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, uh, 256, 512. So 512 times 125, 512, 125, 10, and that's just uh, 512.
12. Add them together. Sixty-four thousand. Okay, so one over sixty-four thousand. They're saying if we do the the division, how many uh, zeros will be to the right of the decimal point? Let's figure this out. One. Okay, one zero, two zeros, three zeros, four zeros, and one. Four zeros. And four is going to be answer choice B. On to problem 109, which says a pharmaceutical company received $3 million in royalties on the first $20 million in sales on the generic equivalent of one of its products, and then $9 million in royalties on the next $108 million in sales. By approximately, so approximately, we're going to have to estimate again, estimate again, what percent did the ratio of royalties decrease from the first $20 million to the next $108 million? So the two ratios are going to be 3 million royalties to 20 millions of sales and then the other uh, one that they give us is 9 million for the next 108 million. They're trying to figure out how much the ratio decreased. Okay, let's see here. What we we'll want to do here is uh, figure out how, how much the ratio decreased first. So 3 over 20 minus 9 over 108 is the same as saying 1 over one, 1 over 12. So that is going to give us the ratio decreased. But remember that we have to put it over the original value to actually get the, the actual ratio. So it's going to look like this. And uh, we also have to figure out the percentage of that decrease. So we have to set up another ratio. To figure out what x is. All right, let's uh, let's do the computation. Twenty times one hundred twenty, or tw times twelve is going to be two forty. Thirty six minus ten is going to get you. Uh, let's see, oh, thirty six minus twenty is going to get you sixteen. Uh, that's going to be over three twenty. Cross multiply the one hundred. One hundred. Is x. It's going to be 1,600 over 240, cancel out the zeros. That's going to be over 3 over 20, which is the same as saying 20 over 3. Uh, we can simplify. Let's see, 10, uh, 12, 36 over 16,000. Uh, what is that going to get us? Okay. 36, 16, 1600, not 16,000. Bah. Okay. Roughly 4, 24, 24, 40. So roughly 44. And the only answer choice that comes close is C, which is 45%. There's probably an easier way to do this. I don't know. I, I didn't see it. So sometimes you don't see it and you just have to go through the computation. But uh, I think we, we, we got the right answer at the end. But uh, of course, this was approximate. You know, we were looking for the approximate number. And so 44 is very close to 45. And that's why the answer is C. Okay. I think uh, we're almost out of time. So I'm just going to stop the video here. But uh, come catch me in the next video when we deal with a product question, uh, a, a question where we're going to have to list out factors and count them. So join me in the next video.